Welcome to Keep Learning IT. In today's video, we're diving into the world of SQL for data analysis. Whether you're preparing for an interview or looking to level up your data skills, we got you covered with five must-know tips and tricks. Our first tip is all about combining data from different queries using set operators. Imagine you have multiple data sets and you need to bring them together efficiently while maintaining data integrity. This is where set operators come to the rescue. We'll cover four of them, union, union, all, except, and intersect. Let's start with the union operator. This operator combines the results of two or more select statements into a single result set while eliminating duplicates. Suppose you have two tables, customers and suppliers, and you want to create a list of unique emails from both tables. To achieve this, simply write union between the two select statements. When we execute this, we get the following result with nine unique email addresses. If we want to combine all email addresses, including duplicates, we can use the union all operator. If we execute this now, we get 11 email addresses returned. As you've probably noticed, there are two email addresses appearing multiple times because we've used the union all operator. Next up, we have the accept operator. This operator is used to retrieve rows that exist in the first query, but not in the second query. For example, this query here retrieves only the customers that are not suppliers. As you can see, we only get four rows returned. The order of these queries is very important because it also changes how the query is interpreted. Having the customers table first means that we get only the customers that are not suppliers. If we were to change the order and put the suppliers first, we'll get a different result. These are the suppliers that are not customers. So keep this in mind when working with the accept operator. Lastly, we have the intersect operator. This operator retrieves rows that exist in both the first and second queries. And here we have it a list of all the customers that are also suppliers using the intersect operator. One more important tip about the set operators is to always make sure the queries you're combining have the same structure. That means the same number of columns and columns of the same data type. Otherwise, you'll get the following error. So there you have it, the power of set operators in SQL. These operators are essential tools in your SQL toolkit, allowing you to tackle complex data integration tasks with ease. Next on our list, we'll explore how to calculate a running total using window functions. This skill is invaluable when you need to track cumulative values over time or rank items by their running totals. Before we dive into the SQL example, let's understand the concept. A running total, also known as a cumulative sum, calculates the sum of a particular column up to the current row. It's like keeping a running tally as you move through your data. This can be incredibly useful for various scenarios, from financial analysis to tracking progress over time. Let's take a look at a practical example. Imagine you have a data set of daily sales for a store. You want to calculate the cumulative sales amount for each day. This will give you insights into the store's overall performance over time. In this SQL code, we're using the sum function as a window function with the over clause. The order by clause within over specifies the order in which the rows should be processed for the running total calculation. In this case, we're ordering by order date to ensure that the running total accumulates correctly over time from the latest to the earliest date. The result will include three columns, the order date, total amount, and a new column we've named running total. This running total column gives you the cumulative sum of the total amount up to each row. Let's execute this query to see the result. And there you have it, calculating a running total with window functions in SQL. We start at 100 and with each date, the value of the total amount is added to the running total. So for example, up until the 30th of August, we need a total of $441.50 in sales. Let's look at a more complex example. Here I'm targeting the order and order details table in the Northwine database. I'm using a common table expression to join the two tables to get the order date and the sales amount. Since the sales amount is not persisted, we need to calculate it using the following formula. Once we have the data from the common table expression, we do the same thing as we did with the previous query. We're using the sum function as a window function with the over clause and ordering the running total by the order date. The first thing you might have noticed is that the running total for some rows returns the same value. That's because it's the same date. The $440 is the total sales amount made on the 4th of July 1996. To fix this, we can rewrite the query to group the data or we can simply use the distinct clause. And that's how we calculate the running total. This technique can provide valuable insights into trends, growth, or progress in your data. It's a powerful tool in your data analysis toolkit. 
If you want to learn more about Windows Functions, feel free to take a look at my Introduction to Window Functions video. Another important skill to have when using SQL for data analysis is knowing how to use subqueries. These are queries that are incredibly versatile. They allow you to create more complex and dynamic queries by embedding one query within another. But what exactly is a subquery? It's a query that's embedded inside another query, typically within the SELECT, FROM, OR WHERE clause. Subqueries can return a single value or a result set, making them powerful tools for data analysis. Let's jump right into an example. Imagine you're managing an e-commerce website and want to find the most expensive product available for sale. This might require you to compare prices across all products. In this SQL code, we're using a subquery within the WHERE clause. The subquery select max price from products finds the highest price among all products. We then compare each product's price to this maximum value. If a product's price matches the maximum, it's included in the result set. If we execute this query, we get the product name and price of the most expensive product in our catalog. As stated earlier, subqueries can also exist in the select and from clause. Let's look at another example. We have two tables, customers and orders, where customers contains customer information and the orders table contains information about the orders. In the outer query, we're selecting the customer ID, company name, and contact name columns from the customers table. In the select list, we're using a subquery to calculate a derived column called order count. This subquery counts the number of orders for each customer. To ensure the subquery correlates with the specific customer of the outer query, we use the condition in the WHERE clause. The result includes the customer's ID, company name, contact name, and the calculated order count column, which represents the number of orders placed by each customer. This query allows you to retrieve customer information along with a dynamically calculated count of their orders, providing valuable insights into customer activity. Let's look at a more complex query. Here we're using a subquery in the FROM clause to find products with prices higher than the average price of their respective categories. In the subquery within the FROM clause, we calculate the average price for each product category using the GROUP BY clause. This subquery creates a temporary table aliased as AVERAGE PRICES that holds the average price information for each category. The main query joins this temporary AVERAGE PRICES table with the PRODUCTS table aliased as P using the category ID. This allows us to compare each product's price with the average price of its category. Additionally, we join the categories table, aliased as C, to retrieve the category ID and names associated with each product. The WHERE clause filters the result set to include only products with prices higher than the average price of their respective categories. Let's execute this query to see the result. This query provides insights into products that are priced above the average for their category, which can be useful for pricing strategies or product performance analysis. For the beverages category, we get two products that are priced above the average unit price of this category. If we execute the query below, we get all the products of the beverages category. If we select all the unit prices and take a look at the status bar, you'll see that the average unit price is equal to 37.979. So the only products that exceed this price are this one and this one, which is the reason the previous query returned only these two products. So, subqueries open up a world of possibilities in SQL from filtering data based on dynamic conditions to performing complex calculations on the fly. Learning how to use them effectively can greatly enhance your data analysis capabilities. Just don't overdo it with subqueries, because they can negatively impact performance. In the next segment of our SQL for Data Analysis video, we're delving into the powerful world of SQL's group by clause. It's a must-know skill when you want to summarize and analyze your data at a higher level. So, what does the GROUP BY clause do? It takes rows that share a common value in one or more columns and groups them together. Then you can apply aggregate functions like SUM, COUNT, AVERAGE, and more to obtain summarized insights. Let's dive into an example. Say you have an e-commerce database with an ORDERS table that contains sales data, including product categories. You want to calculate the total sales for each product category. I've already written part of the query to achieve the required results. This query uses the order details extended view that already has a calculated column for the price. So we don't have to perform the calculation we did earlier. Executing this query gives us the product category for each sale made and the sale amount for that sale. To enhance our query's meaningfulness, we want to aggregate sales data. 
Specifically, we're interested in calculating the total sales amount for each product category. To achieve this, we'll use the sum function to sum up the values from the extended price column. Let's give it a nice alias. To proceed, we need to introduce the group by clause. This clause is typically placed after the where clause, if present, and before the having clause, if used. In our current query, as we don't have a where or having clause, we can simply append the group by clause at the end. It's crucial to note that the columns we include in the group by clause must match the columns listed in the select list of our query. Therefore, in this case, we must group our data by the category name column, otherwise the query will not execute successfully. If we now execute this query, we get exactly what we wanted, the total sales amount for each category. To further enhance this query, we can include the average sales amount for each category. To do this, we'll use the average function on the extended price column. When we execute this extended query, the results will now include the following information. Aside from the sum and the average functions, we also have the max and min functions. As the name suggests, the max function returns the maximum value from a range of values, while the min function returns the minimum value. Let's use these functions to return the highest and the lowest sales amount for each category. Executing this query gives us the following results. The group by clause empowers you to create meaningful summaries of your data. As you've seen, we were able to calculate the total sales amount for each category, the average sales amount for each category, the highest sales amount, and the lowest sales amount of that category. This gives us a clearer understanding of our data and patterns within our dataset. Mastering this technique is a significant step in becoming a proficient data analyst. Next up, we have the fifth and final topic of our SQL for Data Analysis video. In this segment, we're going to explore the Having Clause, a powerful tool for filtering aggregated results. It allows you to set conditions on the results of aggregate functions, such as sum, count, average, and more. In essence, it helps you narrow down your results to groups that meet specific criteria. Let's dive into an example. Imagine you have an orders table with customer data and you want to find customers who have placed orders with a total value exceeding a certain amount. In this SQL code, we're selecting the customer IE and using aggregate functions within the select statement. We're counting the number of orders for each customer and calculating the total amount they've spent. The key here is the having clause. The having clause follows the group by clause. In this case, it checks whether the sum of the sales amount for each customer exceeds $25 million. The results set will include customer ID, total orders, and total spent columns, but only for customers who have spent more than $25 million in total across their orders. Let's execute this to see the results. As you can see, we only have three customers who spent more than $25 million in total across their orders. Because of the count function, we have the total orders, and because of the sum function, we have the total spent amount. The having clause is your tool for filtering grouped data based on aggregate values, allowing you to extract insights from your data that meet specific criteria. It's essential for tasks like identifying high value customers, outliers, or groups that meet certain conditions. If you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing for more SQL tips and data analysis tutorials. We hope this video has equipped you with valuable SQL skills to excel in your data analysis journey. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.